So the exercise is to rotate information around a ring. Uh, we arrange our processes to communicate around a ring. Um, you can do that how you like. The natural thing is you think of rank going to rank plus one, to rank plus two, to rank plus three, to rank plus four. And then when you get to size, you get back to zero again. That's the natural thing to do. Each process communicates. So what we're going to do is we're going to do it. We're going to program up. A, so in the, in the pi example, we programmed a global sum, okay, a reduce. But we did it by nominating a boss rank zero. Everybody sent their data to the rank and I added, you added them up. What we're going to do here is we're going to program up um, a reduce, but we're going to do it in a different way. We're going to pass the message around the ring. Now I say, if you wanted to do a reduce, you would call MPI reduce, which we'll come on to when Nick gives the lecture later on. But again, it's a very, very useful programming exercise because this is the kind of communication pattern that you use in, in a lot of examples like the traffic model. Now, the, the, what people get wrong in this example is not so much the programming, but they don't understand what's going on. So I, it's really very useful to go through this explicitly with a bunch of people. So I don't know if you can, if I can pick a table, I'll pick this table here. So you might want to move so you can see this table. So what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna, what I want to do is calculate these people's um, average age, okay? So you don't have to give your real age, but... So what, so the first thing is, people need two pieces of data, okay? So use the, the blank side just for... And you'll need pens. People don't have pens anymore, do they? Has everyone, has everyone got a pen? Uh, I can give you one if you need one. And you have a message, okay? So that's the message, which is the, the small thing, okay? So what we're going to do is the big bit of paper is their local scratch space they're going to use for recording, keeping track of the sum, and the message is what they're going to send. So the first thing is, start the sum to zero. So you write zero on your local scratch, on your big bit of paper, your local thing, you write zero, okay? And then you write your age, or any positive integer, less than 100, I guess, um, on the message, okay? On the message. So you write your age on the message. So what we're going to do is everyone is going to pass their message to the person on the left, okay? So pass it, and I'll, I'll complete, so pass, so I'll complete it around here. What you do is you look at the message, you, you, you add the number to your running total, then you pass the message on, okay? So you don't alter the message, okay? You just pass it on, so I'll break, so you pass it on. Pass it on. Okay, and it soon will be, I think, is that, is, that, is that it finished if we do that there, once you get this one? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so add the wall up. And what do you get? Every, so first of all, everyone should get the same answer. Although people got the data in a different order, everyone should get the same answer, at least with integers anyway. So what was the answer? 116. 116. 116. Okay, so 116 divided by 4 is 20, 29? 29. That seems reasonable. Uh, okay, so so that's the average age is twenty nine. So that this is an algorithm for doing a, a, an all reduce. An all reduce is a, 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 and Nick will explain this later, but is an operation where you compute some global operation and everybody knows the answer. Okay, so rather than just one person, again, this is not how you would do it in practice. So that's a useful exercise to do. But there are things which people always get wrong, and these are the things that people get wrong. It should be on the slide, right? Ah, so I'll go. I'll go to the notes first. Your neighbors do not change, okay? You don't send to one and receive from one, send to two. You send to the person on the left, you receive from the right, okay? You just do it multiple times, but your neighbors don't change. You send to the person on the left, you receive from the right. You send to the left, you receive to the right. Your neighbors up and down don't change during this iteration, okay? You do not alter the data you receive. You're not passing on the running total. You're not passing on... You're not passing on your age. We initialize it to your age, but after that, you do not alter the data. You receive it, you add it to your running total, you pass the data unchanged around the ring. And the third point, which is a technicality, which doesn't arise in that example, but arises when you program it, is you must not access send or receive buffers until communications are complete. And this is, this um, means that the, this example is just slightly more subtle than you might think when you program it. You cannot read from a receive bus until after a wait on I receive. You cannot overwrite a send buffer until after a wait on I send. It's actually the second one which people tend to get wrong. 
Now, for technical reasons, if you get this wrong, then you probably will still get the right answer, but I'll spot it, so I'll tell you you're wrong. Um, possible solutions, okay, so there, how are you going to break, break, now we're going to use synchronous send, so what I could do is I could do a non-blocking send to my forward neighbor, I could say, right, here's the data I want to send to that person, right, there it is, remember the ticket, then I could do a blocking receive from the backward neighbor, I just stand and wait for it to come in, remember he's doing that, she's doing that as well, so that message will be received, then I can go back and say, oh, that means that I've received the message from that person, it doesn't mean that this message is gone, I'd have to wait for this to go, then I can carry on. The other one is a non-blocking receive from the backward neighbor, I could say, right, I want to receive a message from you, put it there when it comes in, right, and then you can do your blocking send to your forward neighbor, that will match because they've issued a non-blocking receive. Then when that's go back, you can wait for the, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the guy to come in here. Right, then you go on. Or you could do both. You can just say, right, send the data out there, receive the data there, and just wait for them both to complete and then carry on. You, there's three ways of doing it. And they are worth programming up de de because they do have slightly subtle, um, they have subtle differences. And this is a case where you could do wait all, okay? you stick all the requests in a little array of like two and say rather than waiting on them individually you just say you know I want the desk to come in there uh, there's the out guy there's the in guy waits for them both to complete right then we can carry on that's a useful thing to do or you can play tricks at, at waiting for them to um, to complete individually you might say well I don't want to wait for the send to complete I just want to wait for the receive to complete because when the receive completes and I can update my total and then I can wait for the send to it's up to you how you do it Okay, so okay, that's so. Um, I go through an example on the sheet. So we're, we're going to initialize. Uh, how do we? How do you know when to stop? How do you know when to stop? So each process doesn't have an age. So so, so we're going to add up the rank. The only unique number each process knows is its rank. So that's a bit boring, but at least we know what the right answer is. It should be n n minus one over two. But how do you know when to stop? I'll give you an idea. Because we're, we're going round and round, we we'll keep going round, passing these buckets round in a circle. How, when do we stop? Yeah. So some people stop when they see their own age coming in. Now that, that works for the rank, summing the ranks because they're all different. But in general, you can't do that because two people might have the same age. You can't just wait till you see your own number coming back because that might not have been your number. So you do it a fixed number of times. You do it n times or size times. Because you can do it size minus one times. You don't have to initialize the total to zero. You can initialize the total to your age to get rid of one addition. Okay? But you, you, the only way to do it safely is to do it for a fixed number of iterations. Okay? 